All righty, folks. We're going to keep going on along our way here um, as we get into another type of area that applies what we know about trig and other types of functions in general. It's called, and this next type of equation is called a parametric equation. Now, with parametric equations, um, it's basically there are a lot of times we can't get an equation um, to be in terms of just one variable to create a function. For instance, you see in the example here, you have this idea of the equation of a circle. Well, you can't ever solve this equation for y. So a lot of times we'll introduce a third equation, a third variable called a parameter. A lot of times that third variable, that parameter, which is t, is referenced to time. We use it to help us be able to get um, both variables in terms of this third parameter. So they both can be functions in terms of this third parameter or this t parameter. We, that kind of idea is what we come to be known as a parametric equation. So an equation with, that introduces a third variable, which is what we call a parameter, to be able to write the two, ex, the two existing variables in terms of it. So when you graph a parametric equation, when you graph a parametric equation, we call that a parametric curve. So we're not going to go too terribly far with this idea of parametric equations. We're just going to kind of introduce it. Now, one of the things we're used to doing with equations is we usually, let me see, I can't get this a little bit more. There we go. We usually take an equation and we write it in terms of x or y and make a little xy table to help us out. Well, for parametric equations, it's actually a little bit different. We actually are going to make a, instead of an xy table, we make a t xy table. So what we're doing here is I'm going to create a little bit of a table in terms of x and y. And the reason why I went from negative 2 to 3 is because we have, our, we're saying our parameter is going to be from negative 2 to 3. So we're going to take this parameter, we're going to plug it in both the x equation and the y equation to be able to come up with a series of points that we're going to eventually be able to graph. Okay, we'll call this a par and this is called a parametric curve. Now, when we get done graphing it, a lot of times it will end up looking like a curve that we're used to seeing. So we don't necessarily want to go too terribly crazy on that, but but don't be surprised if it ends up being something that we're used to. So let me see if I can actually. We'll make that 10 just for the fun of it. And we'll make this up. Uh, we'll go make this up to six. We'll go down to six. Well, maybe I'll just go to five. And I was really not happy with that one. There we go. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our our t value, we're going to plug it into our x equation to get all the x values. So if I plug negative 2 in here, negative 2 squared is 4, plus 1 is 5. We're taking our t values and plugging them into the t in the x equation. So negative 1 squared is 1, plus 1 is 2. And then we have 1, 2. So we take all these t values, we plug them into the x equation to end up getting all of our x values. And then we're going to take our t value and we're going to plug it into the y equation to get all the y values. So we have negative 3, negative 1. Oh, I did that wrong. Never mind. Negative 5, thank you. Then we have negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, and 5. And from there, you can kind of see the points we're going to graph. So we're going to take, by plugging our parameter, the values of t, in for both the x equation and the y equation, we end up with getting a list of points that we can actually graph. And this is called a parametric equation. So we're going to graph each pair. So 5, negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 5. That's going to be right there. There's one point. And then we have 2, negative 3. 
we're just going to graph the points in terms of how we have them here. One, negative one. And then we have two, one. And then we have five, three. And then we have 10, five. And if we graph these points in order, then we end up getting a non-function parabola. So now, it doesn't have to be a non-function graph that we use a parametric equation on, although that's a lot of times what we do end up using them on. It can be any sort of function, any sort of equation. It's just, it's most useful in these non-functions because you can't get y by itself. You can't get a single equation to, to be a function. But a parametric equation doesn't care. It allows us to be able to use that parameter to help us kind of sketch these in a little bit differently. And you can kind of see how it forms that non-parametric non or that non-function parabola. Well, friends, why don't you guys take a look at example number two there and see if you guys can't graph that yourselves. All right, go for it. While well, you guys are doing that, I'm gonna, oops. Make myself a quick little XY table for when I do it. Let's see here. You guys are probably either you've unpaused it now and watched me do all this, or you're just waiting for me to do it. Hopefully, you've actually attempted it yourself. Because again, these aren't that bad. And again, we're not going to go too get too terribly crazy with everything here. Just want you guys to kind of have an idea how parametric equations look, how they work. Uh, 10 is good enough. All right, so we first start off, we're going to plug our parameter into our x equation. So if I play negative 2 in there, I get 1, and then I get 2, and then 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now we're going to plug our parameter into our y equation here. So we end up with 2. Oh, what's that going to be? Negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, 2, and 7. And now we're going to go through and we graph the coordinates we found. So our first one is 1, 2. That'd be right here. 2, negative 1. And we have 3, negative 2. We have 4, negative 1. We have five, two, and we have six, seven. That'd be right about here. And you can kind of see in this one, it's not a non-function parabola. This one is actually a parabola. Oh my goodness, totally missed that one. Let's see if I can't do a little bit better from left to right here. I still miss that point. Well, you can imagine. All right, and we end up with a parabola. So, friends, these are just parametric curves. All right, let's keep going just a little bit more. Again, we're not going to go too terribly far on parametric equations. It's more of just let's get introduced to it. And so oftentimes we can combine both the parametric equations to get rid of the parameter variable and write them in terms of x and y. So in other words, what we're going to do here is we're going to identify the curve represented by this by eliminating a parameter. So for us, we're going to take our x and write y in terms of x. So when we do this, the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and try to get t by itself in the x equation. So x equals t plus 3. So that means x minus 3 equals t. So then I'm going to go to my y equation. And what, since y is t squared minus 2, 
I'm going to get rid of the T now. So I get rid of my parameter by putting Y in terms of X. So there's our X minus three. So turns out this X equals T plus three and Y equals T squared minus two. All that is, is that's just the parametric form of a parabola. So now this next one's going to be a little bit tougher, but I think you guys have it in you. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video and see if, what you can do with this next one. All right, so first up we have x equals 4 cosine t. So we're going to get cosine t by itself. So x over 4 equals cosine of t. So to get t by itself, then I'm dealing with the inverse cosine or the arc cosine of x over 4. Kind of looks like a little bit of our trig compositions coming in play here in a second. So let's see how this works in. So we're dealing with y equals sine of t. So, but in place of t, we're going to plug in. Cosine or inverse cosine of x over 4. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a look at this graph here for a second. Whoop. So inverse cosine, that means I'm getting rid of, I'm getting rid of quadrants 3 and 4, don't need them. But even still, I'm going to go ahead and graph the cosine of t in that first quadrant because when we're dealing with these, we always put them in the first quadrant in general. So let's see if I can't make this triangle here. So I have this cosine. The angle is t. It's my parameter. And my cosine is x over 4. So I'm going to put my x here, 4 here. And i got to figure out a way to write this y value, this b value, in terms of 4 and x. So x squared, I'll go and call it a squared. I don't want to call it b squared. My b's always looks like, look like 6's, equals 4 squared. So a squared is 16 minus x squared. And a is the positive negative square root of 16 minus x squared. And since I'm in quadrant one, I'm going to use a positive square root. So we're going to let that other side be the square root of 16 minus x squared. So what I'm being asked here then is what is y equals the sine of, instead of the arc cosine, I'm trying to figure out what is this angle? So I'm going to go and put it back in terms of t for a second now that I have my triangle. I'm going to make it red here. So the sine of that triangle then is going to be the square root of 16 minus x squared all over 4. Multiply both sides by 4, we end up with 4y equals 16 minus x squared. Oh, still got to be, there we go. All right, then we square both sides. So let's go ahead and do that real quickly. We square both sides. We end up with 16y squared equals 16 minus x squared. So x squared plus 16y squared equals 16. So this fun little shape here, this is an ellipse. 
This is the parametric form of an ellipse. All right, one last little thing we're going to look at here, and then we'll just go ahead and call this one. Like I said, this is just a real quick introduction to parametric equations, just so you kind of have an idea of how these fly. Sometimes we're actually going to be dealing with the equation ourselves, and we have to create that parametric equation. So this function right here, this cubic function, this is the function y equals x cubed plus 3. So if we're going to try to figure out an equation in terms of the parameter, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to let a, so I'm part a, I'm going to let x equal t. So that'll be my first parametric equation. So that means in place of wherever I see x on the other equation, I'm going to plug in t for it. So that means... So that would be all we're doing to take a regular function and turn it into a parametric equation. Again, I'm going to rewrite it. So x equals t, that's my first parametric equation. Then y equals t cubed plus 3 is my second. So I can take a function that I do know, and I can put it into a parametric form as long as I do determine what the parameter is going to be. So why don't you guys go ahead and pause the video and see if you guys can't take a try at doing on that second one, y equals t plus 1. Go for it. All right, let's see how you guys did. So first of all, we have our first original. We have y equals t plus 1. And then we're going to plug that in to our generic, our original equation. So t plus 1 equals x cubed plus 3. So that means I have t minus 2 equals x cubed. And then I take the cube root of that to get what x is. So again, now we have our system of parametric equations. So x equals the cube root of t minus 2. And y equals t plus 1. So another way to write that in terms of the parameter of y equals t plus 1. All right. Well, that's all we we're doing with parametric equations. Again, it's just a quick introduction to them. How, do you, to how, how to graph a parametric curve. Um, how to get rid of a parameter to determine what you're actually looking at. And then how to take a, a known equation and write it in parametric form. So. We'll talk, I'll see you guys in class tomorrow. We'll talk a little bit more about this. So have a great rest of the evening.